Greetings students and welcome to my extremely topical detour in nonlinear dynamics. In these next two videos, I'm going to be analyzing and solving an important example problem from my nonlinear dynamics book on epidemic modeling. There's going to be three main steps in the full analysis of this model. The first is the actual development of the epidemic model. The second is the simplification of the model, and the third is the analysis. We're going to go step by step here, starting with model development and model simplification in this video. Suppose there's an infectious disease V, which begins to rapidly afflict the population. Let S represent the number of healthy people, I represent the number of sick but alive people, and R represent the number of people who have died from the illness. We'll assume that aside from the change in the population because of death from this infectious disease, there are no other changes in the population. There are no massive changes in birth rate, no deaths from other causes, and no one coming into or going out of the country. So basically a static population in a country with fully closed borders that only changes as a result of this disease. We also assume that this is the course for a typical patient. The typical patient starts out healthy at S, becomes sick and gets moved to the I population, and then dies and becomes part of the R population. In other words, there is a unidirectional flow of people from healthy to sick to dead. You can't skip from S to R, and we're also not including a term for people recovering from I to S. Our third assumption is that healthy people get sick at a rate proportional to S and I over N, where N is the total size of the population. This makes sense. The more healthy people there are, the greater the pool of individuals for the disease to infect. In addition, the probability that a healthy person encounters a sick person is I over N. So the more sick people there are, the greater the probability, the more likely it is for the healthy person to get infected from a sick person spreading the disease. We'll assume the proportionality constant is a positive constant beta. Next, we'll assume that sick people die at a rate proportional to the number of those sick people, which makes sense. If sick people are dying with a fixed probability, then the number of people who die should be proportional to the number of sick people there are. We'll assume that the proportionality constant here is gamma, which is also positive. Just for convenience, I'm going to write down these rate of change terms on the arrows in our diagram. This will make things easier when we write our differential equations. So let's start writing our differential equations, starting with ds by dt. The rate of change of healthy people is just the rate at which healthy people become sick, which is negative beta times si over n. The rate of change of sick people is the rate at which people are getting sick, which is now positive beta si over n, minus the rate at which people are dying, which is gamma i. Finally, the rate of change of dead people is a constant increase of gamma i. So these three differential equations make up the overall model for the epidemic, and this model has a special name. It's called the SIR model, or the Kermak-McKendrick model, named after the people who originally proposed it. So now we've officially developed the model. The next step is to simplify it as much as possible and make it more amenable to analysis by hand. Let's first show what happens when we add all the differential equations together. The beta terms cancel, and so do the gamma terms. So when we add the ODEs, we get zero. Since the sum of all these derivative terms is zero, we can integrate both sides with respect to t. When we do that, we find that s plus i plus r is an integration constant, which is really just the total number of people in the population n. And this equation makes sense. If you add up all the healthy people, all the infected people, and all the dead people, you get the total population size n. And because of this equation, things are a lot more convenient now because it means that if we've determined two of these functions, two of the s, i, or r, we can automatically determine the third function by subtracting the other two from the n. So essentially, our three-dimensional dynamical system made of three differential equations can be reduced to a two-dimensional dynamical system made of two differential equations. And let's actually start to solve the system of differential equations, focusing on ds by dt and dr by dt. If we solve these two equations, then i can be determined as a direct consequence using the fact that everything adds to n. If we solve for dr by dt, we find that r is gamma times the integral of i with respect to t. I'm also going to add an integration constant c1 just to make things complete. Now I can't really evaluate this integral, but what I can do is an interesting trick. I'm going to isolate this integral expression, and if I do that, here's what I get. Now the negative c1 over gamma is another constant which I'll call c2, 
in which case this is our expression for the integral of i, r over gamma plus c2. And I'm going to call this equation 1. Now let's solve the equation for ds by dt. If we take the dt on the right and the s on the left, we end up with this separated differential equation. And if we integrate both sides, we get the natural log of the absolute value of s on the left and negative beta over n times the integral of i on the right. But we already know the integral of i from equation 1, so if we plug that in, here's what we get. Now the beta over n times c2 is just another constant, which I'll call c3, giving us the following for ln s. If we now exponentiate both sides, we can isolate the s of t. The exponential of sums, as you know, is the product of exponentials, and the exponential of c3 is another constant I'll call c4. Now at time 0, the number of dead people is 0, so c4 is just equal to the value of s at time 0, which I'm going to call s0. So in terms of s0, this is my equation for the number of healthy people, s of t. So now if I know r as a function of t, I know s, and by knowing r and s, I can compute i as a function of t. So once we determine or analyze r, we've basically solved the system. Let's go to the dr by dt equation now. We know that i is just n minus r minus s, so we can plug that in here. Finally, if we plug in the s in terms of r, this is what we get. The slightly annoying thing about this equation is that we've got multiple parameters, gamma, n, s0, and beta, which can sometimes throw a wrench into our analysis. So how can we get rid of these parameters? Well, there's an important technique in applied math called non-dimensionalization, where we can convert variables to their dimensionless forms in such a way that the number of parameters is reduced and the differential equation gets simplified to its purest form. I've got videos on non-dimensionalization already, so I won't go through the full process. But I invite you to use these dimensionless variables u, which is the dimensionless version of r, the other dimensionless variable tau, which is the dimensionless time. I want you to use these variables to show that this differential equation for r can be simplified to du d tau equals a minus bu minus the exponential of negative u. Note that a and b here are dimensionless parameters defined by the following expressions. So non-dimensionalizing was quite useful. We've greatly simplified this differential equation to now only have two parameters instead of four, and this is going to pave the way for the analysis we're going to do on this ODE using the techniques we've learned so far in nonlinear dynamics. However, I'll save that for the next video. Anyway, that should do it for this lesson. I'd like to thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.